Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC, and I just wanted to make another video to demonstrate how the N4PY software can communicate with uh, lots of other software packages and hardware all at the same time for things like uh, in your logging programs, getting the frequency and mode that your radio's uh, using entered into your logbook entries that kind of thing. Uh, in the case of the HDSDR software that's controlling my software defined receiver that I'm using as a pan adapter, uh, the point and click, pretty much anybody who's used the N4PY software you know, probably knows about this. So as you click the frequency changes or as you tune the radio you can see the pan adapter change. So um, I recently changed uh, the way I do my antenna selection, but before I made the change, here's sort of a picture. I had uh, I was using an Ameritron RCS8V uh, antenna switch, so I came out of the radio into the amplifier through the wattmeter sensor to the tuner, and then out to this. Uh, antenna relay, uh, this Veritron antenna relay box where the antennas were connected. But coming out of the computer connected to, uh, I'm, I have four 9-pin serial ports on my computer. So coming out of uh, COM6, I went to this uh, serial relay board that's software controlled through the N4PY software. And then this relay board, uh, each re not each relay, but four, four of the relays, out of the uh, relay board were connected across the various switch positions on the back of the N4PY software and this fifth one was used just to supply power to the uh, relays on the relay board. So I, lo I lost one switch position here but I could still switch four antennas automatically. You can configure the N4PY software to select a particular relay on the board based on frequency and there's all kinds of tricks that you can do with this board um, but that's how I was doing automatic antenna selection so whenever I would click on a different band in the N4PY software it would close the appropriate relay on the board which in turn would close the connection to the appropriate relay here on the relay box so that worked it worked fine but it was a lot of hardware you know to get from here to there so I simplified that a little bit and, and in addition to uh, communicating with all of this hardware uh, through virtual serial ports uh, the N4PY software is talking to HDSDR which controls my SDR play receiver and not shown on here are uh, a couple of other serial port pairs that I'm using to talk to some other software. Now Logic version 9 is my main logging program and it isn't connected through a serial port virtual or real, it's connected through the Pegasus file interface. So for logging programs that uh, can use the Pegasus file interface it's a good way to get the, the band and mode information to those logging programs through the file interface because uh, the software needs to be connected directly to the radio and without some way to share this COM port uh, you know you wouldn't be able to do that so you can use either the virtual serial ports for some logging programs or those that support it you can use the Pegasus file interface so the change that I recently made though was that I switched to an Elecraft KAT500 antenna tuner. So you can see that simplified the diagram a lot. I still have the same thing up here basically except that COM6 instead of going to that serial relay board uh, is now connected to the uh, an Elecraft antenna tuner and uh, is operated through its utility program, operated and configured through its utility program. These two COM ports are still connected to the radio and to the uh, amplifier. And this uh, antenna tuner has 
uh, three connections on the back for antennas and through this utility program you can configure this antenna tuner to automatically select the right antenna based on the band that you're on. Once it senses the RF it'll switch to the an right antenna for that band. So I still get my automatic antenna switching but without all of those extra boxes. So I eliminated uh, I eliminated three boxes by just changing the tuner from the LDG tuner to this tuner. So I eliminated the uh, Ameritron switch which included the control box and the relay box and then I eliminated that uh, serial relay board. So the wiring of everything is a little bit simpler. And that can be shown here. So the Pegasus Plus software is still connected to COM4, COM5, the amplifier and the transceiver. COM6 is connected to the utility program for the Telegraph tuner. The virtual serial ports talk to HDSDR and to the N3FJP uh, contest logging program which I use for the few contests that I do participate in. And then the Pegasus file interface is used for my main logging program which is the Logic 9 software. And here are just the color codes for the different uh, connections. So these are physical serial ports. These are physical 9-pin serial ports. I have four of them on the computer and three of them are in use. Uh, this is a USB port and then of course the software and the virtual serial ports. So that's how things work uh, right now. So um, I want to do a demonstration now of uh, how the software can talk to all of these other different pieces of software. So I have here my main logging program which is uh, Logic 9, which I like. I don't use all of the features of this. I use maybe a quarter of the features that the software actually has, but I, I like this a lot. And down here, through the Pegasus disk file interface, you can see the radio frequency and the HDSDR frequency and the uh, Logic program are all synchronized. And if I tune the knob, you'll see the frequency change here in the frequency display for Logic 9 and of course it'll also change here and here. And If I click these two change as well as this one. And I wanted to do some experimenting so I downloaded the uh, demo copy of WriteLog which I, I don't use right log again uh, what contesting I do I use the N3FJP programs but lots of folks use right log so uh, I configured right log to use one half of one of the virtual serial port pairs to communicate with the N4PY software you can see it's also synchronized so again as I click everything changes 18113 18113 18113 and there's no I was gonna say there's no noticeable lag there is a tiny tiny lag but you know in reality it's no problem because by the time you enter a new log entry that you know it, it'll, it'll be settled down so as you tune so keep an eye on these two here as I tune uh, the radio with the tuning knob And this blanks out every now and then. Uh, maybe I'm tuning too fast for the file to keep up. Um, but the point being that both of these do keep up with very little lag, and so does this one, of course. And then I also added one more program. So here's the N3FJP software. Uh, but I've just moved it off to the side here just to line up the frequency displays. 
just to show again as I tune the knob everything keeps up and you can see a tiny you know fraction of a second lag as the uh, the frequencies update but really it's not a problem so again just to demonstrate how the N4PY software can talk to lots of things all at the same time and in this settings window the user 5 transverter and step IR window is where you configure these things so you want to select Tokyo HP COM port uh, to talk to the logging programs to talk to HDSDR you, uh, you want to select the SDR IQ HDSDR pan adapter uh, checkbox and then you want to say use THP COM port for external logging program you want to click that and here are all of these serial ports I have defined both uh, physical and virtual so COM 3, 4, 5, and 6 are the physical ports 15 and 16 is a virtual pair, 5051 is a virtual pair, 5253 is a virtual pair. So HDSDR is using the 5051 pair. N3FJP I believe is using the 5253 pair and then write log is using the 1516 pair. So for instance if we go into write log and we say set up and we say ports so I selected COM16 and the trick with this is in your logging program you have to select a Kenwood radio apparently the N4PY software uses the Kenwood uh, command set or serial uh, commands to, to talk to the logging programs and that's all I did I just went in here and selected the uh, one of the one pair one of one of the COM ports in a particular pair and told it a Kenwood radio and away we went and it was the same thing for N3 FJP so if I go in here and I say settings and I say rig interface Kenwood and COM53 and you can see the frequency here for polling the radio and that was all there was to it Logic 9, if we do uh, tools, we say setup, we say radio interface. Um, I have these turned off, but this one's the one that's being used. Tentec, Jupiter, and Pegasus this file interface. So that's how I have. Uh, logic set up and if you click on this little symbol it'll show you the status of all the COM ports so 3 is available this is a physical uh, port on the back of the computer it's available but COM 4 and 5 are unavailable COM 6 is available because again that's connected to the Elecraft tuner and I don't have the utility program running right now and then these others uh, pairs are used because they're connected to the software. So, oh, and I'll show you the uh, configuration file for the N4PY software. There's a lot of thing. Whoops. There's a lot of things in here, but what you want to pay attention to is when you get the software, you already have this entry for THP COM port and again this is the one that's used for the HDSDR and that's the one that you see highlighted over here you have to add I believe you have to add these or maybe they're in here but they say uh, none 
maybe the, I can't remember if I added them or if they're already here but if they're already here they'll just say none and then you just you just pick one port of, of a pair and you notice you're not telling it what it's connected to you're not telling uh, the software that COM port 2 is uh, COM 52 is connected to uh, the N3FJP software you're not telling the software that uh, COM15 is connected to write log. Uh, I don't think it really cares. Uh, he's sending the same data out on each of these COM ports, which is the uh, Kenwood uh, serial data for frequency and mode, and maybe other things, I don't know. But uh, but each of these ports is being sent the same, and sending and maybe receiving the same information. So you don't really have to say what's connected to the other side. And that's how you that's how you configure those uh, virtual COM ports in the N4PY software. So you know I'm, th this isn't really a uh, a tutorial on how to do this. It's more of a demonstration of what you can do with the software to make it talk to lots of different things. And of course, I would never run all of these logging programs at the same time. But the point being, there might be two or three uh, pieces of software that you might want to run at the same time that can communicate through the serial ports to the N4PY software. And that's how you set those up. So I know this was kind of fast, but again, it was more of a demonstration than uh, anything else. So just one more time. There's write log and here is the N3FJP. Let's move him back over here. Shoot. I hate it when that happens. So again, I'm just lining up these frequency displays for the different programs. And again, as I point and click, they all change. Or as I tune the radio with the remote tuning knob, they change. And that's about it. So I hope uh, you get something out of this video if you're an N4PY software user. And if you're not, if you're thinking about it, again, you know, just a demonstration of how you can connect lots of stuff to this software and have it all working at the same time. And it's pretty easy. So 73, and thank you for watching.